Why is Kate not with William uh, on his trip to New York? Why, why did Kate not go with him, you mean? Yes. Well, I think uh, it's very, very simple and it's very human. Uh, they have three children, uh, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, uh, 10, 8 and 5. And the Waleses, as we'll call them now, have a strict rule. Uh, one of them has to be at home, if at all possible, when the children come home from school. Now, you and I have been in a very high pressure profession all our lives, and we've spent more days away from home than we care to think about, and we've missed the school plays, and we've missed uh, the Christmas concerts. And we've done all that in the name of our profession, working in television. And of course, it's a very demanding mistress. And it's the same for the prince. They, he's, they, he's got, they've got uh, fantastically busy schedules, but they try very, very hard wherever possible to have one of them at least at home. And that's a good idea. We don't like the idea of latch, latchkey kids for ordinary families. And I, it's good to think that at Adelaide Cottage, where they live in Windsor Great Park, the same rule applies. So I think that's to be commended. He has gone to New York as part of his Earthshot initiative He's doing great things for the environment, backing schemes which are going to improve our world. He's been over there dabbling around in oyster beds, which they're trying to revive uh, off the northeast coast there. Uh, and he didn't actually need her to be there. So what has she been doing? She's been down in the West Country, uh, Yeovilton in Somerset. Some of your viewers may know it. Uh, that's one of the two Royal Navy air bases because she's the Commodore in Chief of the fleet air arm. And she's been seeing the people down there, uh, looking at the helicopters, meeting the people, and trying on a big old fashioned May West. And she was rather taken aback when uh, it was inflated with a bang, in <laughs> which she took it in good part. Uh, and uh, But they had to actually uh, deflate it a little bit so that she could, <laughs> um, could get it off her head. But she kept her beautiful long curls You've seen this new haircut, it's called the mermaid look. I think that's quite a good name for it. Uh, and she took it all in good part and was laughing. So she's at home, he's away, uh, and they're at home for the kids. Now, I'll be honest, uh, Princess Charlotte is a big hit in my household, particularly with my, uh, well, obviously with my little girls, and a big uh, hit <laughs> in our office here as well. Now, uh, you posit that there is obviously a path to her potentially becoming queen, but she stands a better chance than other high profile, slightly to the left or slightly to the right of the succession line in the past. Exactly. So you have uh, Prince William, he is the heir apparent. He'll be the next one, all things being equal, to be the monarch. Then comes his uh, eldest son, uh, uh, George, who's 10. He's the heir presumptive. Now, in the old days, uh, Prince Louis, who's five, would have leaped over uh, Princess Charlotte, he would have been the next in line because he's a man. But very, very, very sensibly, the late Queen decided, and it was agreed by the Commonwealth, including your Prime Minister and New Zealand, everybody was taken into uh, account, and everybody gleefully agreed that primogeniture uh, running through the male line would be abandoned after centuries of centuries. So it didn't happen with Princess Anne, she was superseded by her younger brothers in the line of succession. But that no longer happens, and it shouldn't, because if you look in history, Britain and Australia, we've had some wonderful queens. I mean, Queen Victoria uh, is one, Queen Elizabeth, uh, who in fact, uh, her funeral was uh, exactly a year ago today, the 19th of September. I realize it's the 20th in Australia now, but it's still, it's still the anniversary here today, the 19th. So uh, there's nothing wrong with queens. We've all done rather well with queens during the, queen, the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, of course, the great adventurers, uh, Drake and Raleigh and people like that went out to uh, discover the world and conquer the world. They didn't quite get as far as Australia. That was left to Captain Cook uh, and, and, and other intrepid sailors. But uh, queens have always been quite good for this country and quite good for the Commonwealth. So it's a good thing. I think Princess Charlotte's a beautiful lo looking little girl. And what I understand, Paul, and I have this on very good authority, 
is that the Waleses are bringing up their children in a very, very normal way. There's, uh, there's strict structures, there's discipline, uh, nobody gets away with anything. Because I don't know what you agree, you're, you, you're a father much more recently than I am. My, my, my daughter's now 50 years old. But when, when, when I was a, a, a young father, if you will, uh, children like structures, they like discipline, they like to know where they are. Uh, they don't like uh, too loose a regime. Uh, because uh, you know, odd things happen. They like to know where they are. And fortunately, the Waleses see it that way. They, they're they loving parents. They're hands-on parents. But they have their standards and they, they keep to them. I've got two girls, five and eight. Wish me luck for the next few years. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to talk to you, Michael. All the best. Pleasure. Always.